How's it guys and welcome to Get Into Grips brought to you by Godox SA and Golden Power Batteries. So today it's not going to be a glamorous model, it's not going to be sort of creative lighting, it's going to be more of a business type sort of uh, setup, e-commerce pack shots. So why, what is an e-commerce pack shot? So it's a pure white background with a product and it's a great way for photographers to actually make some good money if they do it properly, meaning if you actually plan, sort, get the lighting right in camera and very minimal editing, you can turn out these images very, very quickly. So with the setup I'm going to actually be showing you today is actually going to be just that. So I'm going to explain exactly what I do. It's something that I've actually learned from other photographers over the years and literally just put everything sort of in together and found something that actually worked quite well for myself. So I'm going to do a setup. It's going to be white background. We're going to put the lights on, two lights onto the, onto the actual background to make sure it's evenly lit. And that way also we're going to get a lot of the bounce back of that light to come in to be the base for the product. So what lighting am I using today? So I'm going to be using two 8300 Pros. There's these guys. So these are going to be my backlights. I've actually got the non, it's not a standard reflector on here. So this is the ADR14 reflector. The ADR14 comes in a kit. It comes with a grid and gels and all that type of stuff. So that's what I'm going to be using. I find these reflectors work quite well with the 8300s when I'm doing this type of uh, shooting. So let me go and set these up at the back. All right, so I've got two, two light stands. I'm going to point these lights actually in at 45 degrees to one another. And the reason I'm doing that is so we can get a nice centralized spot of light um, to actually create that even and that bounce back which you will see just now all right also same height same distance away from the background that is the two lights now set I'm going to probably have these lights actually powered at around about one about a quarter power on on these because we are about a meter away and then our table will be probably another 5.5 half a meter away from the lights so I'm going to run these around about quarter power right the next thing I need to do in this setup is I'm going to put a poly board behind each light and what I'm going to do is actually have that board with the black side actually facing towards camera I'm going to have the white side pointing to the boards the white background now what's going to happen obviously when these lights fire it's going to bounce there's going to be some light bounce behind here and there will be a space between the poly boards for the light to actually come through and that is going to be the secret source to our pure white backgrounds so i've got the two background lights actually set in now what i need to do is get the poly boards and put those up quickly and as i mentioned the black side is going to actually go towards the camera side. So we're actually covering the background lights. Basically, with the boards up, we've got the space between for the light to actually come back through onto our table. And when that light comes back through, that's going to give us that pure white actually on the actual product itself. So let me get the table in place. Okay, so I'm just using a camping table for this product because the products that I've actually got are not big heavy products. They're just bottles of, of drink and there's a couple of, there's a lens. That's all the stuff I'm going to be shooting. Got the table in place. But how is this going to go white? There's one little piece of equipment that I treasure in my studio. 
and that is the pieces of perspex, acrylic, plexiglass, whatever you want to call it. So this is a white gloss and this is going to go on top of the table. So when the light actually comes back through the space between the two boards, it's going to hit this and give us a nice pure white seamless to the background that is 1.5 meters away. And that is what's going to be the actual main part of this setup is to get that seamless look between this back edge of the board and your white background. Also what this does, it actually gives you a nice reflection. So you also you get that right in camera. If you have a reflection in camera, then you don't have to waste time in Photoshop trying to create a reflection. Everything is there and it's very easy just to brush a sort of a gradient to actually take that back up. We have our table, we have our perspex in place, we actually have our boards. Now I need to get obviously set up the key light, but with the key light, what I'm going to do is actually put a diffuser panel between the light and the actual table where the product's going to actually be sitting on. So I've got this on a C stand. It's one of these um, fold up type shoot through diffuser panels that I use. I've just got a couple of A clips clipping it onto the actual stand. And so I'm going to bring this around and just put it up against the table like that. So the reason I put the clips on is just to keep it straight. So it doesn't go floppy all over the place. So they actually keep straight and I can get, it looks, just looks neater. Okay. Key light. So what am I using for my key light? Let me just show you one of the lights I'm going to be using. So this is the AD400 Pro. This is what I'm going to be using in a 30 by 90 Godox softbox, just a rectangular one. And this will be our main light that we're going to be lighting up the, the product with. To put this in, I place it slightly on an angle, almost like a 30 degree angle from the edge of the box up against the diffuser back. So just gives it a bit of a, a gradient light coming through the, the diffuser. All right, so we've got the light on one side. That means we need to actually try and light from the other side. Otherwise our shadows are going to be too much and we're going to lose dimension and shape of the actual product. And we also want these products to be properly lit up for the clients as well. So I'm going to put a reflector board. I'm not even going to set up another light. Uh, this is going to be just a piece of foam board from an art shop. Let me just come through here. So it's nothing, nothing special. Okay, so the foam board is just going to sit on the opposite side of the actual key lights and bounce light back into the product. And that is it. So that's your setup here. So this is your foam board coming down on top of the white perspex. This is then our diffusion cloth on this side which is right up against the perspex here. And also I'm going to just push it up against the board. So we've created almost a tunnel of light. Um, so that's what we're going to be shooting our product in. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm just going to explain a bit of the process, what I do when a product is actually, or the products are actually sent to me. So sometimes I may get a client, they'll send like 200 products either by courier or they drop them off themselves. And they're all different sizes and all different shapes. So what I would normally do is I would set up some trestles and I would put a worktop down and I would actually go through and I would actually sort the different sizes, the different shapes, um, just so that I know that when I start shooting, I can shoot all that with where the camera is set at and I will get the perfect shot for those. So 
it just speeds up the process be able to actually just go in and out with the product and shoot it quickly then what i do is i make sure in the editing process i make sure my whites are white so whatever settings i have on my camera i make sure that i do not have any gradation or any sort of gray gradient in my whites because my whites must be white and that is final because that it can give you a headache in your post processing you don't want to be deep etching you don't want to be doing too much around the actual whites on your product you can adjust levels curves and that type of thing for your product add some saturation that's fine then i basically will crop it square run a photoshop action and export it and it's saved and ready to go to the client so another thing to remember is when working with products get yourself like a microfiber cloth because this is going to help you uh, wipe down the product make sure it's actually dust free as best as you can because you don't want to be editing too much particles off the product and any fingerprints that may be on the product get rid of those because you don't want to be in editing those things out so also what i do is i have a pair of gloves now you can use white cotton gloves or you can actually just use the gloves that comes in some of the lens cleaning kits which is this one so it's got a bit of a rubber grippy sort of front on it and i find this stuff actually these gloves actually work well when handling the product all right so when you're working with the product itself so i'm going to shoot a couple of uh, this prime drinks okay so what i would do is i would make sure i wipe down the product completely making sure that there's no fingerprints no dust no nothing and making sure everything is good and clean once i'm doing that i will then put it in position So putting this in position, I'm going to come in around about probably a ruler length, 300, 300 millimeters, putting it there. And just turn these lights on now. Okay, so with the backlights on, so I mentioned I'm going to have the backlights running around about quarter power. And I'll have my key light at about 1 8 power. So I'm going to start off there. My camera settings, for those who want to know, is going to be F9, 100 ISO, and 125th shutter speed. That's what my camera set at. So let me just first make sure my lights are set correctly. Right. So what I'm going to be doing now is going to be taking a, a shot. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a shot where I'm just going to actually have the key light on. And then I will also take a shot where I just only have the background lights on. So you can actually see what each light setup actually does. Because remember the backlights is a completely it's, its own setup where it's lighting the background. And the key light is just lighting the product. So it's two different light setups for two different purposes i'll show you what each one of those does so you can see for yourself everything's now set the products there the lights are in place the lights have been set on the flash but there's one shot i always do first those who know and watch my videos before i'm going to switch off the trigger completely take a shot and it should give me my black canvas so let me just take that one first so there is my most important shot of the day where it's pure black okay that shot there pure black now i know exactly that i'm going to be responsible for lighting up that product so what i'm going to do now is take a shot with just the key light in place right so that is just the key light 
You can leave that picture up. I'll just speak over the. So there is the key light. So the key light now is the only thing that's lighting up the bottle. Now you can see on the white uh, base, the white acrylic, you can actually see the shadow because the light is coming from the one side and it's casting a shadow onto the base. But there is light that's bouncing back from the board to the bottle. So we've, we've got the, the bottle actually lit up nicely. But the background is totally black, which is right because our first image was black. If it's not being lit, it will be black. Okay, so let me switch on just the background light. And I'm going to turn off the key light. So you can now see just the background light. It's loading. So there you can see now, we actually have the background lights. There's enough light coming in there that's actually almost lighting up a bit on the actual bottle itself. And then you can actually see that there's no break between the background that's lit and the actual base where the bottle is standing on. Okay, so to me, our background lights are pretty perfect in there. What I am going to do for this shot is actually move the blackboards a little bit closer in together. So we actually narrow down the space between each side of the actual bottle. That just helps to define the lines on the neck of the bottle where there's no sort of liquid or there's no label. So it stops that from actually disappearing. So let me just go and quickly move those two boards in. So I'm just going to make it so there's just enough space for a bit of white down the side of each each side of the bottle. All right, another thing I do besides sorting out the products and everything else and trying to streamline everything, I make sure that I actually set a gray card in on one of the products that I've put in place in front and I take a shot of the gray card so I can actually take the reading off the gray card to make sure the white balance is right. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to put that on the product. And I'm just going to focus on this thing. Okay, and I'm going to fire. So that shot with the gray card enables me now to go into Lightroom, get hold of the little color picker and color dipper here, click on that. And then that should give me what my Kelvin value should be. And then I can quickly set my camera. We are to about, I would say around about 6,000 Kelvin should be a cool number to actually set that to. Okay, so I'm going to set the camera to a 6,000 Kelvin. Then I should be pretty close to what I need to be shooting and the white balance shouldn't be too far off. So let me do that quickly before I take a shot. Let me move the gray card out. All right. Let me set my camera. Kelvin value, I'm going to make 6,000. Then I'm going to take a shot. So there's our shot. Um, the light is fine. If I look at the actual lettering on the front of the bottle, I've got the light from the softbox, which is a stronger because it's our key light. The fill light coming in on the side, which is a softer light on the actual prime. And then the center of the prime has got that dark, so it gives that gloss look to the actual um, logo on the bottle. And the blackboards are in just, just quite close to the bottle, so we can define the actual bottle top, making sure that that is got some sort of shape and definition to it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go through some products. I'm just going to shoot them, shoot them, shoot them, shoot them, and then take it to an editing process. All right. Always remember to clean your product. Because if you don't, 
You're going to have a nightmare in Photoshop trying to do this stuff in post. And if you actually had your client's products go back before you finish your editing, you can't reshoot it. So now you've got to literally edit all that stuff out. So rather do everything up front. So I'm going to quickly go through this. So this is going to be take one out, put one in, make sure it's center. Then I'm just going to take a shot. So we can get the screen over. And while that one's loading, I'm just going to leave the computer screen there so you can see as I'm as I'm shooting. Just going to wipe as I'm. This is high speed. Remember, e-commerce pack shots is all about quick turnover, getting the product out so you can make money as a photography business. Because you're in photography not just to be creative, but to also make money. So this is the important things that we need to actually make sure we do. That's fine. Next product is shot. Should be loading through. So I'm just going to carry on shooting a couple more. And I'm only really taking one image of each of these um, because I've done this quite a long, a lot of times. You can even do the top, uh, top here if you want. Okay, next product. It's always nice shooting nice colorful products because they let, oh, didn't fire. I'm on a fire. Oh, the back one's in fire. I think the battery might be low. Okay, another thing that you, you may need to shoot is some electronics or even flashes. And they're obviously going to be Godox accessories from Godox SA. So here is an old TT600 flash, which I'm going to do. I'm going to do a multi. Um, multi-angle shot on this so literally I'm going to be taking a couple of a couple of shots one like this one from the back and one where it's just pointing directly at me so we can just get some different angles because if clients actually ask me some products they want multiple angles for then those obviously get charged differently from ones where we just take one straight shot like of a bottle they got the logo on the front, it's just one angle. So that is priced differently per image than a multi-angled one. So we're going to do this one, we're going to do the back, and we're going to do one from the front. So that's what the client has asked for. That gets built differently to a single product shot. Okay, so let me get this one in place. Okay, so I just want to angle this one slightly, just to make sure. So bring that open a bit, just to make sure I can still see in the camera. I can still see the logo, and we just lift the flash head slightly. Okay. And then also when you look at the images on the, on the screen, you can actually see it's already got that reflection because we are using 
the perspex to give us that that nice finish all right so these are three angles of the flash what I'm going to do is actually take uh, another shot of a product which is going to be a bit taller and what I'm going to do is put this in so this is the SA17 and the SAP projection unit I've just put the two together and I'm going to take a shot like this I hope I can fit it in my camera. So this one's going to come through because I did it a bit more of a portrait style because I had to fit in because the product was taller. But that doesn't matter because it's going to be a square crop. And so there it is that one. So if you look at that image, we've got the beautiful light both sides, giving that shape to the actual object. The logo of Godox is in that dark section, so it actually stands out. And the detail with the light coming in from behind through the SA17 looks amazing. Now I'm just going to take you over to the editing process where I will show you exactly what I do there. And once you know that, so I'm going to go through the editing process, obviously um, you can see in the image here the, the whites are looking pretty seamless from the background to the acrylic board and uh, it's done a pretty good job there. The two boards being closer in, narrowing the space down has given us a bit of definition between the clear from the top of the label to the actual neck of the bottle so we can at least got lines there and so we can look at probably bringing our blacks down a bit maybe lifting the whites a bit um, I think exposure wise we're looking pretty cool there um, I mean you can add a bit of clarity you can add a bit of saturation not too much and then we can then see if we can get this into adobe photoshop so while that is loading okay so we're now in photoshop so what the first thing i normally do here is get hold of my my little so i get hold of my eye drop tool here which is just below your crop and just below your thing and then i'm going to click here and then i'm going to get the color picker up here yeah so we've got white 255 all the way down 255 all the way down there just to prove to you that it does change if you click somewhere else 255 255 so in camera we've actually managed to get the pure white between the tabletop and the background so we don't have to worry about the uh, what I'm going to do is actually change this to background default because I know we are white center this up bring it down a bit so I'm just going to create a new layer just take my white brush and okay so there is your prime drink done finished and you now want to do a resizing so i've got an action here called e-commerce take a lot so what it's going to do, if I've got multiple layers, it's going to go and select the background. Then it does an image side size. Then it actually hides the blue and the green. Runs an unshape, uh, unsharp mask. Then show green and blue. 
then it does an image size again to the 2048 I think it is there yeah and then it hides the green hides the blue does another sharp and then shows the green and the blue channels and merges the visible layers that it actually has in the actual action uh, or in the actual image so I'm just going to run this and it'll just go through and select and bang it's very quick and if you look there on the actual image itself let's just move it across there's the image itself and you can see now this is ready for you just to export it out now you can the projection unit. I'm just going to see if I can straighten this a bit. Okay, so we've actually got this in here. We've got a bit of the blacks, bring up the whites there. And I'm just going to actually take it, edit it in. Yeah, here I'll do exactly the same. I just put my square crop on, and because I've got default color back, which is white, that is what's going to be selected. Okay, and then I just get my brush. Make it a bit bigger. Obviously, you can mask this type of thing and, and do it that way. Keep a bit of the reflection in the bottom there. Okay, so there's our image, and uh, we can just check our levels. I just want to check the curves maybe on this one, maybe just bring it down a little bit, bring the highlights up a little bit. That's cool. So our levels, when we look at the levels of our image, we should see the whites right up on the side here, meaning that that is cool, that is good. And if I look at the blacks on here, the blacks are looking quite good. So what we're going to do now is just run our action. And it's the e-commerce take a lot. And I just run it. Okay, so there is our projection unit and its size. We've got pure white. And that is it. That is your e commerce pack shooting down to a T. Um, I hope this has actually helped you guys. And obviously, I'll come back with some more content soon. Um, we'll be coming up with some more Godox uh, SA live shoots. Um, next week and also we'll be looking at doing some pre-recorded videos okay guys i think that's about it i think pretty much there's a couple of edits i've done as you can see it's very minimal editing very quickly done export out get to the client and finish if you had to do 200 products like i've done in the past um 200 products to do this and try and get those whites right in post instead of getting it right in camera it's going to be a nightmare it's going to take you ages you're going to lose money you're not going to make money 
So thanks for watching uh, and we'll see you again soon online. I'll be doing some more live shoots on the Godox SA channel. So be sure to tune in there and don't forget Friday nights with F Stop Live and Sherwin. And uh, yeah, we'll see you online again. Thanks for watching. Cheers.